right, let's get started uh, first with an agenda review. If you could look at the agenda real quick, um, I posted it in the chat and it's also available uh, in the calendar invite. And uh, take a quick look at it. Let me know if there's anything you want to add or remove. Shuffle around. We'll take about um, 20 seconds uh, to do that. So let me know if there's anything that needs to be. All right, we good on the agenda? Last call, any changes? All right, looks like folks are good. Let's start out with uh, introductions. I'll go just across my screen, starting with Bruce. Yeah, I'm uh, Bruce Link. Uh, I'm an instructor at uh, BCIT. Uh, among other things, we teach uh, you know enterprise Java containers, Kubernetes, all those good things. And uh, so OKD is really handy in uh, covering a lot of that stuff. Excellent, Diane. Um, Diane Mueller, I've been a long time OKD working group uh, co-chair with everybody else here. And um, also the con community development person for the OpenShift um, Cloud Platform BU. Uh, so been here for a while. And Vadim. Um, hi, I'm Vadim Lukowski. Um, I work for Red Hat and I'm a technical co lead for uh, OKD Project. John Fortin. Hey, I'm John Fortin. I work for Market America here in uh, North Carolina, uh, senior systems architect, and uh, we're doing a lot with um, OpenShift OKD um, in our environment. So. Every week's a little different. Timothy. Hi, Timothy Ray. Um, I work in the Chorus team at Red Hat, so mostly working on Fedora Chorus. Okay, Mike McCune. Uh, yeah, Mike McCune. Uh, you might see my handle as El Miko. People call me that online. Um, I am an individual contributor from Red Hat. I'm an engineer working on cloud infrastructure stuff, and uh, yeah, just love the OKD community. Excellent. Brian. Hey, I'm Brian Innes. I uh, work for IBM, but here is a sort of a hobbyist home lab user of OKD. Riti. Riti. Hi, um, I, I'm for Red Hat and I'm here to talk about OKD. And Christian. He was here. Oh. Sorry, hey everybody. Um, I'm Christian Glomick. I'm an uh, engineer on uh, on the OpenShift arc at Red Hat, and I work on ARM enablement. Excellent. He's enabling ARMs. Uh, I'm Jamie McGarra, and I am uh, co-chair here of uh, these meetings and um, at the University of Michigan, where we have multiple OKD uh, clusters doing various tasks. All right. Um, let's now move on to release updates with the D. Um, okay, we didn't have any new stable this week, mostly because we've been pushing out 4.8 internally and watching the problems related to 4.7 to 4.8. Uh, there's been a couple of rather small ones found, so this will land in OKD 4.7 nightly. Uh, our major Blocker now is um, OVN is disrupting services, and our CI is very unhappy about this. So we need few fixes um, merged in 4.8 to prevent that from happening. We merged 4.9 fixes, so we're waiting for them to be cherry picked back. Uh, there also has been an OVN issue related to OVR workers not joining. It also has been fixed in 4.9. We're waiting for confirmation so that it could be cherry picked back to 4.8. So helping with this uh, would really help. Um, most likely this weekend uh, I will release a new stable based on 4.7 uh, to get all those 
things we get from um, Kubelet and uh, from Fedora Core OS because we didn't have a release for quite a while. And uh, we're also railing up and folks. Also railing up folks. Um, so we're also gathering folks from engineering internally to get more volunteers. So hopefully we'll get more fresh faces here. And um, I believe that's all related to the release upgrades from me. Thank you, Vadim. Uh, and if you could particularly in the notes, notate the things that you wanted help on that you mentioned for the community to help on, uh, underline or star those in the meeting notes. Um, we have good first issue label in GitHub. That's probably the best things to start with for newcomers. Other tasks are very complex to start with. For instance, we want Network Manager 132 in Fedora 34, or we or or my migrate to Fedora 35 sooner because 34 32 Network Manager has critical fixes for us, and currently we pull them from the copper instead of having a tested release from Fedora. Um, so other tasks are pretty large. Most are related to our internal infrastructure, like fixing release controller to have proper channels and so on. Um, I not sure how to structure all those to do. Should we just I, we've published them internally, so I'm hoping engineers could hop in onto that. And I'm not sure how to involve community that. Should we just dump this list and find some assignees or carefully curate and give more like easy to start with jobs? That's something uh we would be would be interesting to discuss. Let's put that as a discussion for the next meeting because this one's pretty packed, but I would like to define a path forward for that. Um, I think that that would be. Uh, okay, let's uh, move now to FCOS updates. Right, so I have one big item is that we've made uh, new releases of FCOS. Uh, to pull in the fresh uh, fresh kernel and fresh systemd releases to fix some critical bugs there uh, i've pasted the links into the notes uh, we currently have one non regression uh, with the new system version i don't know if they made it into okd releases but that's the status on fedora core side And um, yeah, and the second point is mostly a continuation from last week and the week before. Um, we we do have one. Uh, we we have uh, ongoing work to to bring a Arch sixty four support in Fedora Core S, and um, also are still working looking into whether we ship by default with kubernetes focused or single node focused defaults but that should not really directly impact the okd uh, community it's much more federal core side discussion but uh, essentially the, uh, it will involve those changes and some configuration changes and that's it for me And now let's, uh, are there any questions on that? Actually, I should ask, are there any questions uh, from folks here uh, on what he mentioned? No? Okay. Just the, no. The, question, the only question I have is maybe for Vadim is, is there any impact on the release for these? I don't think so. We can, we cherry pick the state, whatever is in stable Fedora Core OS whenever we want to it's just manual action now we previously had an automatically import but with the new system we have to do this manually so uh we can do this anytime i'm planning to do this on friday so it shouldn't be an issue really and then christian you had something 
Yes. Not, not really um, a question, uh, but yeah, for uh, for OKD on ARM, the AWS AMI app or ARCH64 AMI um, for FCOS will also be required. There is actually a JIRA card, and I'm not sure if it's public, but this um, should be the one uh, where, where we could follow that, track that work. I'm just going to link it. If it's public, I'm, I'm going to put it in the, the notes as well. I just posted yeah, it on I the can, chat. Yeah, I can get yeah, to Yeah, I it, can so read it. it. Yeah. Okay, perfect. I'll put it, I'll put it in the notes. Great. Thank you, Christian. Okay, and yeah, so, uh, just just oh. one one minor comment. There's uh, a test AMI that I posted a link to in the previous notes from the previous meetings, so you can get that here if you want to try out Fedora Chorus uh, on AWS. And about the the system D regression, it's the system D regression is unstable right now, so. It, it comes with the fixes for the for the CVE, so that's why we currently have have that in stable and will um, well then next time we make a testing the next time we promote testing so in about one week or something we'll be back to a fixed uh, version of system D and a new version of the kernel as well. Any other questions or comments on that? Right. Uh, now moving over to our issues section. There's only one new issue that's been added since then, and this was open nine days ago by ProtoSAM, and this is the update the OKD-based CRC build. Who's our point person for CRC right now? Well, it has been um, Charo Groover for the most part, but um, I know he's. Been involved, I think so. I think he's gotten busy. Yeah. So um, we may need to find someone in the um, CRC actual product management engineering loop um, as opposed to a working group person to do that, so. Which and is is the link in the notes? I'm looking um, at the notes. Hold on one second here. You could. Uh, oh, well, here, I'll put it in the chat first and then I'll put it in. Okay. So it's just this one. And uh, now looking at discussion items, uh, it looks like we've had, um, and Brian, we will be getting to that, that overall topic in that discussion sort of later. Um, we've got uh, Boot Cube service not starting anything related to that that we can Someone, Vadim, you're just waiting for the log. Did you actually get a log bundle on that? Yeah, looks like you did. Or no, you didn't. No, I didn't think it has it. All right. Uh, update OKD site broken. Yes, you know, broken due to n dots. Oh yeah, that was the red head support. So, Vadim, do you want to close um, 790 since it's our uh, since it's OCP, or do you want them to close it once they've gotten support from Red Hat? I'm I'm fine with leaving this open. It most likely affects OKD as well, so okay. we would need once we reach some conclusion, we can we can. And missing worker node. Self has got. Yeah, that was that overt bug I mentioned on my status. So we figured out that for some bizarre reason, Ovir checks which interfaces do you have on your node and finds the IP from them. Um, they don't take into account that you can have an OVN installed and so on. Um, we fixed this in 4.9, but we never managed to get this verified. CI has been pretty rude to us. Um, I'll give it a couple more tries, and if we ensure that this fix is fixed in CI, we'll cherry pick this back to uh, 4.8 and 4.7. But if we could make sure that manually this works, that would be that would be even better. 
Um, hey, hey, Vadim, I'm going to try it on my orbit system after the meeting. Is it any of the dailies? Because I noticed they're failing on, on some of the other platforms. Is there a specific nightly that you want to want me to test or just the latest one? Um, I think it's been around for like a week. So the latest would be great. If it fails on vSphere, um, it's most likely due to Docker IO uh, rate pull request. So feel free to pick whichever is passing at least AWS. Uh, okay. We'll take a look at this later. Thanks. Uh, this discussion has a link to Bugzilla. Oh, it's already set to verified. Perfect. Uh, cool. So we can cherry pick right away. But some additional confirmation that we're missing, anything else would be great. Thanks. Excellent. Vadim, could you provide a little bit of a synopsis of 788 and pruning and sort of the angle you're, you're trying to get in asking for a bug report and some of your thinking? Uh, that's about release not present and stable, right? So that's one of the tasks we wanted to pass to um, release controller owners. Currently, everything which matches the regex is landing in a particular channel. So if you use stable 4, you would have anything we tagged into this. But in, uh, in Red Hat's system called OSIS, we have real channels where we manually can move releases between stuff. So that's something what we want in a release controller as well. And the result of this is that nightly is no different from stables from the looks of what how release controller sees them. So we can have them landing in different channels and it's very easy to confuse them. And if you install a nightly, you can still choose a stable release and eventually it would be pruned by release controller and there's no way identifying that you, you've installed nightly. So what we want is uh, to make sure that you will get a proper notification that it's not, it's a nightly, it can be pruned um, and users could decide on their own if it's a testing stuff or they want to migrate to something stable or they have mirrored the release of some more information that that this release may go away. And that would be the ultimate fix for this uh, issue. But at this point, you would probably have to either reinstall the cluster or hope that the images are now gone in the registry and hopefully these are not pruned on the image. So most likely the upgrading to stable would work, but not really guaranteed. Um, I'm not sure should we, how do we phrase this in discussion because it's a very, very long topic and pretty complex one. Um, we probably we should have... If you want, we can save it for the next meeting, but I think it'd be good to sort of to cover it in a little more depth at another time, you know, for yeah, sure. That... That was my idea. We should cover the whole channel system and how things get promoted in a clear fashion, at least in a meeting, so that later on we could document. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. Let's shoot for maybe two meetings from now. So a month from now. All right. That's about it for the discussions that uh, that are up there. All of the other ones we've are pretty straightforward or we've talked about previously. Um, there's a lot of questions on certificates. I wonder if we should somehow document the certificate process better or certificate management and process better, just because I'm noticing there's been a lot of stuff in, in, well, some of that was one person hitting multiple places of communication, but um, there is seem, seems to be a lot of stuff on certificates might be helpful to um, shed some light on that process at some point and how folks can manipulate certificates better. Just an observation. I'm wondering if there's something in the OpenShift blog in the past that we can use. We can uh, search for that, for sure. Yeah, Let's that see. might be something we could reuse or update and I can, if you find something, I can tap that person to, to update it um, if it's out of date. Uh, one interesting thing here, I think, uh, 
is, first of all, uh, OKD manages its own certificates itself, but I've also seen the question whether you can kind of uh, do that or trigger a new renewal before OpenShift would do it itself. So, and I don't have an answer to that. And the second thing I think uh, noteworthy is that there is a search manager operator now um, on Operator Hub, which, uh, I mean, search manager is, is probably the, the almost default way to manage certificates on, on Kubernetes uh, in general. And that should, I mean, you can, you can already just uh, install the, the standard search manager on, on an OKD cluster, but there is now also the operator which will uh, do that for you and uh, keep, keep that search manager deployment up to date for you. Um, and I, I'm not sure in which catalog it is, but I, I think it should be in, in, on one of the uh, public operator hub catalogs. Yeah, it's certainly, in, it's certainly in community operators. The problem is that Cert Manager is creating and, and taking care of end user level certificates, like things you would use for your uh, ingress and things like that. But this issue discussed the internals of where and which certificates this Cube API server has, what does Cube API operator does with them, how do they pass it on to each other and things like that. So that's very hardcore technical stuff. And I believe it's already described, at least the expected result is already described in enhancements repo, but it's very, very technical. So I don't think we have a real short gist how to do, uh, how to trigger their update uh, sooner, but that's the starting point at least. I, I'm pretty sure that API server folks should have a shorter description so that other teams would be able to like understand what's going on. And oh yeah, uh, absolutely, absolutely. I, I agree. Um, and I should probably make made that clearer. The distinction is between certificates owned by by OpenShift itself, which OpenShift itself manages, and then um, service uh, grade certificates, um, which could be can be um, handled by the cert manager. But that is for, for user-deployed services on top of OpenShift, just like on, on, it would work on top of any Kubernetes cluster. But yeah, I agree. We, we should definitely find out uh, what the case is for those, um, those OpenShift-owned, OKD-owned certificates and how one could uh, trigger renewal and manage those um, or change how OpenShift manages those itself. Excellent. All right, uh, let's, we're almost at the halfway point, so let's jump into new business. Um, so this came up in the documentation meeting, it came up in um, a discussion item that Brian posted, and I wanted to, to foster a discussion with the group about the fact that there's kind of a mix of working group activity and sort of for lack of a better term, support activity in the various channels of communication. And should those maybe be separated? Should there be a boundary of some kind? Um, an example would be the Google group. The Google group, I think, originally was intended for, um, you know, uh, working group communications, but now it's more sort of the more used for support stuff. And um, at the Docs meeting, there was discussion about creating a new Google, um, you know, uh, sub channel sub basically or or subgroup, right? And so I wanted to run that by folks. And, and so, what are folks' thoughts about this? As, uh, Brian, maybe you can lead the discussion because I know you did a lot of uh, thinking on it. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, this really came out with the confusion I had when I sort of started following the community and wanting to get involved. <clears throat> Just looking at the, the the various sort of threads that are there, you end up with quite a list of places where you're told to go for, to look for information. And I know that we've had a few sort of frustrated people that have just posted the same question everywhere, hoping to get get a response. And for me, it would be easier if you said, if you if you're looking for some money to help you out, go here. Um, and then have a place that if you're looking to sort of join the community and get involved, 
and learn about what you can do and what helps needed go here where at the minute we sort of have to filter through everywhere we go seems to be a mixture of people asking for support and discussions about sort of work in progress or work that we'd like to get done and um, so I, I think from a new user point of view or a casual user for the community having a place and and, and being specific this place is for this activity um, would help the sort of general community anyone else have thoughts on that well, I, I would love to see a separation in the Google group um, between uh, the working group administrative um, release kind of updates and conversations and bug fixes in an addition in a release to have a separate place um, for people to post what we um, are avoiding the topic of technical support kind of questions. So some sort of separation without giving the idea that um, it is a supported release of OpenShift um, by Red Hat, so it's that kind of conflagration issue. But I also am wary of creating yet another channel to monitor um, for all of us um, out there in the universe paying attention to the Kubernetes OpenShift dev and OpenShift user. So, um, But I think if the instructions were clearer on the OKD working site um, about that um, we could do that and leverage the issues list um, or the discussions list better. That's just my, I think left over from the docs meeting. And yeah. I, I, I oh, guess another ahead. question is, do we need all the channels? Because I mean, I, I know discussions are a new thing on GitHub. Have they replaced the need for the Google group, for example, or the mailing list? Do do we still need all of the various places? Or, or can we actually? To reduce the number of places that we actually use. Yeah, and Diane actually linked to, you know, and I, I'll we'll have to look back in the notes. I don't, the site that you linked to, they actually, for their community link, and Brian, you were at the docs meeting, um, their link to the community stuff goes to the discussions of GitHub. Yeah. If we did that, that would resolve this and it allows people to link directly. To um, to tickets and other discussion items, and uh, it's one clear place for linking to code parts. Um, it seems could, like it would be a good help. Yeah, and then we could just keep the working group Google form for other things, administrative uh, no. working group stuff. Yeah, we would have to gently say say to folks who have been posting to the, the, move the Google group. Hey, just so you know, we've shifted, but that's fine. You know, that, yeah. that shouldn't be too bad. That would make sense, and it would certainly make uh, it a little less uh, cluttered when it comes to the the working group mail that I that I get now, because it's like, hey, this is tagged for the OK group working group mail, asking about OpenShift deployment stuff. It's like I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. Uh, Neil, could you give a a three second who you are? Just oh, because you came in late and it's just for well, on. I tried. I tried to come in earlier, but my internet refused yeah. to cooperate. It's all good. Uh. Just so people who know who you are. Yeah. So, hey all. Uh, I'm Neil. I'm a senior DevOps engineer at Datto, uh, working on software engineering, release engineering, focused on packages and containers and that sort of stuff. And I run um, one of the uh, OKD deployments internally at Datto. I'm here mostly. Um, with my Datto hat off and my Fedora hat on, where I work on um, uh, technology and development in the Fedora community and providing a bridge between the Fedora community and the OpenShift community. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Okay, so if we were to do a straw poll vote, straw poll vote right now, uh, raise of hands of switching the community, like just having a community link that goes to the discussions and making the working group just the working group google group just for working group communications show of hands it, hey that looks like everybody all right almost everybody it, if, if i may uh, just jump in here uh, very quickly i think brian um suggested removing the google group entirely even uh, and i think we we created it specifically for for notifications around uh, our meetings and 
uh, maybe even announcements of, of new releases. So I do think for that we should keep on using it, but we should clearly or make it clear that um, user-related issues and, and yeah, just, just anything usage-related shouldn't be posted there. Um, that it's and yeah, that it's really only for for the working group um, we can up, announcements. We can, up, we can update the description um, to reflect that for the group, and then um, you know keep nudging people to the right places. I think that's, I do think, you know, as the person behind the, the screen on the Google group thing, um, we need that for administrative stuff. Um, and and, and it, this would not be to push anyone out who might be interested in participating in work group stuff. So we will probably want to make that clear, like, hey, yeah, this is just for working group stuff. But if you are interested in working group activities, please join us type thing. We don't want it to seem like it's a walled you know, space and, and like it's only for like a select few special people or anything. Absolutely. And we could even make it like um, in, in the Fedora Devel list where if you're new to the working group or you want to join the working group, you, you can send your, your own self introduction to that list and just, you know, say who you are, what you do, why you're interested, um, but just not have it as a like problem solving channel because it, that just gets very spammy and we have, I think we should really focus that uh, to GitHub and for like ad hoc uh, questions, you can still use Slack for that as well. Uh, but on GitHub we'll, we'll have, we'll be able to track it and um, link to it while yeah. it's, yeah, it get, it's get, getting very unwieldy very quickly on, on those Google groups. Yeah, so I think if we had sort of a boilerplate that everybody could cut and paste or their, their own variation of, um, oh, this is a great, um, question here, please go and post it over here in discussions um, and feel free to just cut and paste your email and pl place it here. Um, and, but do check and see if someone else has had a similar thread already going so we're not repeating ourselves too. So um, that's that's the only caveat. But I think that's, that's perfect. It, it's actually, for me, it's a sign of maturity of the working group that we've hit this tipping point. So I'm, I'm pleased that we got here. So um, yeah. And this also simplifies the workflow for um, Vadim and other folks working on issues because now it's right in the discussion and then Vadim can say, oh, this is really something that needs to have an issue opened up. Just go right here to this other tab and open up an issue. So it, it simplifies that process as well. So there's, excellent. excellent. There's another angle on this I wanted to mention just quickly, you know, now that we're bringing it up. And that's like, it, I think in the future, we're probably going to have to think about more of these subdivisions of the community that's growing here because, um, and I think about this almost like in the same references like Fedora, like when we get to the point where we have people who want to start contributing code and want to get into the developer space about around OKD, we're going to have to set up like separate spaces for those discussions to happen because I think, you know, as Vadim kind of hinted at earlier, you know, like syncing up with the engineering effort that's happening inside of Red Hat is no small task. And if community members want to start contributing to the separate pieces, then like this working group meeting is probably not the place to have those discussions. We're going to need developer oriented spaces where we'll be able to connect engineers from within Red Hat who know the specific components with community members who would like to contribute to those components. So that's just another angle we're not talking about, but we're maybe we're not to that tipping point yet, but I'm hopeful. I don't think we're there yet. It'll it'll be a little while. Um, <clears throat> you know, one of the, the bigger challenges right now is that uh, when it comes to contributing specifically to the OpenShift platform, there is no straightforward way for someone to figure out if they even can yet. And like that, that's a starting problem that once that is more directly resolved, it becomes easier to like say, Hey, you want to help make OKD better, you know, from a code perspective, then we can start directing people towards that and do that sort of thing. Like, uh, I know that right now, I've, whenever I've tried to build like even a small portion of OKD, it's just, uh, it's a rabbit hole of, of, of crazy because like figuring out actually how to do it and getting it to like work is, is, is not trivial at all. Yeah, you're it's, absolutely it's, right. Neil. Yeah. That's why I wanted to bring it up now. To contribute, you know, in various parts a couple of different times 
I mean, the, the OKD specific stuff is pretty easy, but if you try to contribute to the non OKD and the common stuff, um, I, I will tell you, outsiders don't seem to be very welcome unless you're a red hatter. Yeah. Um, outsiders are not very welcome. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, I, think, I, mean, I figured that out with the, in the open shift three days, which is why I haven't done too much of it this time around. I mean, I think there's a pushback associated with this though, right? Like I, I know for a fact that my team would be happy to accept a patch from anyone in the community, but the problem is how would I know that you, you know, aside from our CI testing, it's unclear that anyone approaching one of our projects would even understand how to set up the test environment to build it properly. And that's, and you know, Neil, you're absolutely right. We're not at this point yet. I wanted to bring it up though, cause I wanna make sure we're ready for it because part of my selfish desire here is I would like to help build that bridge between Red Hat engineering and community engineering. I mean, and for this... sure. Like the, I have certain things that I'm interested in that I'd like to see, you know, built into OKD and the OpenShift platform for, for, you know, admittedly somewhat selfish reasons, but also because, you know, I want to I want to be able to do that kind of stuff, but right now I don't even know how I would do it. So this came the up at the docs meeting. The, the and, problem is, is that this oh, is a commercial product, you know, and and we're getting the open source part of it, but we can't necessarily add to the open source part of it without also affecting the commercial product. And that's where I think, you know, part of the pushback is you know, you put something in that's going to affect the commercial product and everybody's going to be like, well, wait, you know, that's an outside person. I don't know whether we can really do that or not. Um, well, that's, that, that would be very, uh, so like, if, if anyone in Red Hat's teams were having, had that particular attitude, I think that would be a problem because like, that's pretty much all of, of Red Hat's stuff. And, and and that's definitely not what came to my mind. It's my, like what came to my mind is that just the mechanics of actually making a change to OpenShift is unbelievably undocumented. Uh, and to, to a level that like someone who even has some Kubernetes expertise, like Kubernetes contribution expertise, is probably going to have a hard time yeah. working through I OpenShift. And there's, there's another there's another level to this too. You know, the Kubernetes we contribute into um, from Red Hat engineering perspective, we contribute a lot into the upstream of Kubernetes itself. So, if some of the things you're looking for are Kubernetes things, um, contributing into the Kubernetes work streams is probably where you should be making those contributions. It depends on what you're trying to you know, to accomplish too. But so there's like, there's multiple levels, but as, um, as, uh, as you pointed out, Neil, and, and probably Mike too, is, you know, everybody here is looking for patches and pieces, but it's the build process, um, I think, and the testing of it that gets incredibly complicated. And really the reality is OKD is a sibling stream rather than an upstream to um, OpenShift. So, um, that's you know that that's the the caveat. But creating an issue or um, or a, you know making a, a patch to to OpenShift um, or any of the pieces that are under the hood of what is now called OpenShift, um, whether it's you know something that came through with the K native stuff, a lot of it happens in the very very upstream um, of this and then gets pulled into OpenShift. So. Um, not that I want you all to disappear and go into the Kubernetes working groups um, or the Knative or Envoy or whatever Istio folks, but um, that's where a lot of like, if, especially if there's there's core changes to something that you're looking for or support. Um, but so that's sort of one the nature thing that of the came out of the last working group meeting was the documents working group meeting was that it would be helpful if Vadim did a walkthrough of the build process. So I'll work with Vadim on setting that up as something to be scheduled during one of our full working group meetings to just walk us through what documentation there is and what process there is for building. And that I think will be something that we can, if we set aside a whole meeting for that, we can then have that recording and have the documents that come out of that or that are linked to from that be used um, to get people started. So Christian, go ahead.
Yeah, just uh, reading the chat here, um, Vadim said, make a PR and CI will do the rest. Um, that is unfortunately the way it currently is. It's the only way to really test your changes because, and I don't want to sugarcoat this, um, setting up a your own prow deployment, um, which is the, the build system we use, uh, would be in, an incredible lot of work. Uh, and it's also, and that I think is the real issue here, we have some of the builder bases we use that aren't freely distributable because they are rel or they have some rel parts in them. So we probably have to provide a an, an, a pure CentOS or Fedora based uh, alternative uh, builder base image so we can actually do those builds locally even for just single components. Because once you have a single component, you can then take any any release payload, replace that specific image you built with your uh, or the the, build, the replace the image in the release payload with the changed custom build you made, and then deploy that to test it. Um, but it's still for even for the single components, it's not always possible for non Red Hat folks uh, to do those builds because some of those builder bases just aren't available to them. And I do think that is a part um, for for our community developers, uh, which is a real, uh, yeah, a real barrier. And I think that is probably good, um, a good thing or, or, or a thing we, we definitely have to do at some point, provide a freely distributable um, CentOS or Fedora based builder base so we can actually build those components locally, everybody, so anybody could do it, not just Red Hat folks that have access to the internal Red Hat range. Okay, I want to wrap this thread up because we do have, thank you, Christian, I do want to wrap this up because we do have a fair amount of items uh, in the last 16 minutes to get through. Um, uh, Vadim, uh, OKD operator catalogs still work in progress. Do you have anything to say about that? And actually, there was a question um, about, um, uh, Brian, what operator were we talking about uh, at the docs meeting? Um, um, pipelines. Pipelines, yeah, status of pipelines, yeah. All of that is in the works. We didn't have, we didn't, haven't seen anything really happening, but we draw attention to this every couple of weeks, I think. It's almost daily this time. Um, it's also related to the status of getting volunteers and so on. Um, hopefully we'll have it soon, but to the teams, some particular teams themselves already, we just need the catalog and we can start filling in. But the ball is on all and dev site and um, we're doing our best to push them. No estimates so far. And uh, another one that came up, this came out of the docs group. Maybe I should have put this a little, little bit earlier, but um, name and scope of the install.md and clarification on the documentation. This sort of came out of that same discussion and what Brian uh, brought forward in his observations um, and wrote out for us. Vadim, is there a better way that we could do the install MD and, and sort of separate stuff out that's install versus building versus testing versus et cetera. It seems like install that MD is, is kind of a mix of everything right now, isn't it? Yeah, I think I would rather pass this to Doc's team, or rather Doc's work group, uh, because I want to cram a lot of things in, in one single readme, and that's probably the worst way imaginable. Um, I can think of really how to structure this properly. Uh, there are tons of information we want to cover there, and at least have some links we could refer people straight to, so I don't know how to how to properly structure this. I'm hoping Doc's team would have better insight. Okay, so, but you're, you, we, we, the reason I brought it here was because we didn't want to go and start suggesting and working on things and suggesting changes for things if you were, had a, if you were particularly wedded to it for a technical reason or, sounds like you're not, so. Yeah, I mean, I don't have any 
great thoughts on this, really. Um, I would rather have some options to choose from, like different layouts. Um, and I'm thinking the more different links we have, the better, so that we could link folks to particular parts. But it could be parts of one single, it could be headlines in, in one single markdown, or it could be different markdowns documents. So I don't really have any preference on how to structure this. The way the way we have this in docs, Doki.io is probably a good choice, so we probably should kind of mirror this structure, like in a in a sense. Um, but I would rather have we'll some. Talk about it. Yeah, yeah we'll I would talk about have it in the docs meeting for sure. We just didn't want to make your life harder uh, or anyone else from Red Hat who ultimately gets you know the brunt of a lot of questions and and uh, you know has to do a lot, a lot of. Uh, it impacts you a lot. Uh, okay, so next thing, this one Mike wanted to bring in. Mike, take it away. Migration from in-tree to out-of-tree cloud controller managers. Uh, yeah, so this is a big change that's coming in the Kubernetes community, and you know, it might be I might be skating way ahead of the puck here. Um, you know, considering that we're kind of working on the 4.8 release, but in 4.9 OCP, uh, we're going to start releasing uh, a tech preview and I guess for Azure Stack Hub, it will be GA. Um, we're going to start releasing these out of tree cloud controller managers. Now, this is a big migration that's happening in upstream Kubernetes. They think they'll do it. They'll finish the migration on 1.25. Um, but these are the controllers that talk between like the kubelet and the cloud and do things like, uh, you know, set up services and routes and like, you know, handle node lifecycle terminations and whatnot. Right now, all this code is handled in tree in the in the kubelet, and it's all being moved out of tree uh, to separate repositories, which means that there will be separate deployments for the controllers, and these will be done like kind of per cloud. Um, you know, as part of my effort to bring what's happening here back to engineering inside Red Hat, I share a lot of details of these meetings with my team, and my team had asked me like, hey, you should bring this up in the OKD group because this will be something that will be hitting OKD in 4.9, and um, I know how much everyone here loves to tinker and play around, and this is one of those areas where we'll probably need lots of soak time in terms of testing these things out. Now, to begin with, um, it's just going to be like AWS and I think OpenStack and um, Azure Stack Hub will be released in 4.9, but then 4.10 we'll see like IBM Cloud, potentially Alibaba, others and there will be more and more of these coming oh vSphere as well so like as these start to get rolled out this is going to be a change in the way that OpenShift or OKD is deployed and probably by 4.11 or 4.12 we're going to start looking at this as the standard way um, the the, the entry stuff will go away and be deprecated at some point but it won't that deprecation probably won't happen to like 4.13 or 4.14 so anyways this, I wanted to bring this up yeah go ahead what, sorry. Is, this, what is this again like I, I think I missed the uh, a bit of this. What's changing? The so this is um, if you've been following upstream kube, there's been this talk of in tree to out of tree cloud controller managers. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that. Yeah. So that's that's what that's what's happening here. The in tree cloud controller managers will go away. We're going to start releasing dev preview and tech preview in 4.9, and then that'll kind of roll forward. So I just wanted to bring it up here. Hopefully. Um, I offered to do a demo about some of this stuff at some point, so hopefully we could show it off in OKD. Um, you know, ideally it won't make a di big difference, but I know since people here are working at the cloud layer, uh, I imagine you're going to run into problems with it. So yeah, that's it. That's very helpful. Oh, and just I guess by way of mentioning, I put two links in the document. One is the out of tree migration enhancement, which describes like the real nitty gritty technical details of how we're going to handle this in OpenShift. And the other one is a link to a new operator that we've created, which will man manage the deployment of these uh, cloud controller managers. Very cool. Well, thanks for helping us uh, get ahead of the game, as it were. Good. And we'll check in with you periodically on where things are with that, like maybe quarterly or something like that. Yeah, no, that'd be awesome. I think like, you know, part of the thing here too, and this is kind of speaking to what 
you know, there's this awesome conversation happening in the comments here. This is kind of speaking to something that John's getting at, which is that, you know, at least from my team's perspective, you know, cloud infrastructure team, you know, we, we see the value that this community brings to the work that we're all doing. And what we would like to do is figure out how we as engineers inside Red Hat can make this more successful. You know, how can we get the community more involved in what we're doing? How can we get these components that we're working on, you know, closer to upstream, closer to like what's actually happening at the head of development. So like, you know, really I would like to help to solve exactly this kind of disturbance that John is talking about, we don't want it to be seen as a hostile community for changes to come back from outside in. We would like to accept those, especially for the work that our team does, where we might have, you know, bugs at the provider layer between, you know, whether it's these cloud controller managers or the machine API controllers, our team is working on both these things. And there is no way that we'll be able to handle the amount of clouds that are coming in and that we're planning to bring in. And so like what we want to do is we want to help build out the community side of this. So like, you know, yeah, like I would love to get to the bottom of what John's talking about. And if there are projects that are giving off hostile vibes when you try to bring a PR back, like we should mention let those. We should figure out what's going on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Cause let like, us know if you're getting pushback. Yeah, right. I know for a fact what John's saying, if John showed up to machine API operator repo or one of our providers and opened a PR, it would get attention. It, we would not just be like, no, you're from outside. Now, yeah. granted, if you're trying to put a feature in, that might take longer to get merged. But yeah. anyways, I, soapbox disabled. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so helpful. I see with this, you know, you bring up this uh, out of, in tree to out of tree thing. And I noticed that you that the feature in in the OpenShift enhancements repo specifically says that CSI migration is not included. Is that happening somewhere else in something else or whatever? Because like yes. CSI in tree volume API, the in tree volume drivers have been deprecated for what the last three Kubernetes releases now. Yeah, it's the CSI stuff is separate from these cloud controller managers. Yeah, so it's it's being handled separately but in parallel. So that is also happening. I think some of that, yeah, has happened, but yeah, it will continue to happen. Okay. Excellent. Okay, we have five minutes left, and so I want to make sure Diane has time to talk about, uh, what do we have next on our list? It's KubeCon, NA. Well, and I also wanted to put in, um, John, the, the more we can teach stuff, and if you want to work with me and, and do a briefing or a video on, you know, how to teach that or a workshop on teaching that, um, and I would be totally on board with that, um, giving you the space, creating a hop in or whatever it is we need to do, um, and recording it and breaking it down into the steps because, yeah, the more, the more people we can get doing it, and this is the constant ask that I have from product management and engineering is, you know, what can we use OKD to do, you know, and most of it is testing and deployment, testing and deployment is what I keep hearing, but, um, you know, ARM is coming soon, so we'll make Christian talk about that next week or the week after when he comes back from PTO and has it all done and working. Um, so that brings me to KubeCon, um, and I will put an email out on the um, sort of administrative Google group. I'm asking as well, but um, if anyone is planning on being at KubeCon North America in person, I would love to know um, because the you know even at Red Hat, it's severely limited who can travel. So having um, people who are OKD savvy who are going to be there, that would be great to know. Um, and I can use you either in the booth maybe with an exchange of more than T-shirts or something this time. Um, but it's going to be very limited. Um, attendance, I think, at KubeCon North America for OpenShift expertise. So um, I am definitely interested in it. Yeah, Amy. I think, Amy, didn't you get a talk accepted? Um, and I'm pretty sure having a talk accepted gets you um, up a notch in permission to leave if you're a Red Hatter. Um, I'm behind a border um, at, up in Canada, and I don't even have permission to travel to the U.S. yet. Um, yeah, my talk will be at 8. O3DE, the new gaming open source yeah. project. So I don't know if that'll push me over or not. Don't worry, I got a call. I'm I'm pushing for you, Amy. I'm, I'm <laughs> I, and so is Chris Morgan, your boss. So we we have a call. I'll come to Jesus meeting tomorrow about who's going to get to go. 
but I'm looking more for like external folks from the OKD Working Group or Fedora, Timothy, and your community. If you hear of someone who's going, uh, we just um, want to make sure we have um, experts in the booth um, and as well as in some of the upstream working group meetings too. Um, we may do a we we well, may we will do an OKD working group um, office hours again um, virtually. So um, you know look for that, but you know, right now it, it's severely limited who's who's going um, to, to KubeCon in Los Angeles. So um, if you are and you're watching this recording, reach out to me and let me know because I will use you and give you swag. Excellent. All right. We have like a minute and a half left. Any last minute thoughts or comments? We're actually just right on time. Diane. Well, and one more, I put in the link, um, pad, is it paddling upstream with, or upstream without a paddle.com launched um, with uh, Charo Groover, who's a working group member and some great tutorials are on there as he says all the home lab and CRC stuff. And be in parallel with this meeting, I've been chatting with him while he's been supposedly working on something else and not able, able to attend. He will attempt to do a rebuild of the CRC um, with the current release to address that issue that um, we talked about earlier. So just, um, he's out there in the ether, he just can't show his face. But um, if you get a chance, take a look at his, his, new, um, his new blog. Excellent, and it might be helpful at some point for us to go through CRC as a thing so that other folks are familiar with. Yeah, and he said he would write up the process to do the build um, and create um, some documentation. It's in his own personal repo right now, but and make a .md file in the actual OKD repos um, so that if that someone else wanted to build it or he got hit by a bus. Um, won someone, the lottery. Let's go with won the won, lottery. Won the lottery, much better. Charo, if you're yes. watching this, you're winning the lottery soon. There we go. All right, folks, thank you so much. So, sooner, or, sooner or later, we'll, we'll actually automate those builds, uh, hopefully hopefully sooner than later, um, and have some right. DI and, and build automation for CRC as well. Uh, we've definitely brought that up internally now. Yeah. 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 We'll let you know well, if there's movement. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. Stay safe. Bye-bye.